Today we are going to be learning if it is possible to reach max level with only 100 HP. That's right, not a single stat point will be allocated towards defense for the entirety of this video. The challenge that arises due to this is that every single enemy past the first island can one shot me. Also, I am limited to only 12 of the total 36 accessories in this game, since the other 24 give some sort of health boost, which is not allowed. And with double XP now activated, let's get this journey started. First up, I fight these bandits just to get a little bit extra melee damage. Then I hop on a cruise set for Fountain City. Here I use my main account to make the NPCs here nearly one shot, and then I punch them until they're no use for me anymore. Once arriving at the desert, I smack these desert bandits around and save up just enough money for me to purchase my very first fruit spin. Now, me having never used the bomb fruit since the dawn of Blox fruits, I was a little unfamiliar with its abilities and not too sure what to expect. But to my surprise, with the combination of its high damage and wide range of abilities, I am able to make quick work of many of the NPCs and bosses that stand in my way. And being able to purchase the three abilities would make it even better. But unfortunately, I only had enough money to pick up air jump and aura, but I'll come back for flash depth later. And to show you I wasn't lying about the crazy damage the bomb fruit does, check out the speed at which I shred this Vice Admiral. The Vice Warden and the Warden in the prison are no exception, as they are both easily taken down with the power of the bomb fruit. But Swan poses a bit of a problem. Not because he's hard to defeat or anything, but in the process of farming him, this four-eyed freak thought it would be funny to ruin the entire premise of his video by throwing his ugly pink coat on my back against my will. But I have made the decision to continue playing with the hope that everyone watching can ultimately forgive me. Before reaching the next island, I pick up Flash Step and see what fruit I can get from the Blocks Fruit guy. I'm never going to use that. Okay, next island we got the Magma Admiral in the opposite corner. He's easy, I just dodge his magma hits and light him up with all my abilities. Fishman Lord is even easier due to the fact that he becomes useless if he gets stuck behind a 2 foot wide pillar. Up here in the sky, I am able to get my very first accessory, if you don't count the pink coat incident that happened earlier. And for the small price of $500,000, I am able to acquire the Tomoe Ring, which increases my box for damage by 10%, and that is exactly what I need. And with the combined power of the Bomb Fruit and the Tomoe Ring, I am now reaching strength that is capable of rivaling even a god. With him taken down, I approach the final island of the first sea, home of Cyborg, Fountain City. Alright, I have done all I need to in the first sea, but before I head to the second sea, here's a quick look at how I've allocated my stats so far. I got 200 into melee, 21-27 into blocks fruit, and of course, not one point into defense. With the entirety of the first C experience, 100 HP wasn't too much of an obstacle. Cyborg was a bit of a struggle because there's no good way to cheese him to my knowledge. Everything else, not too bad. Anyways, second C, here I come. First things first, I gotta hit the fruit spinner. And I know, I know, I have had some amazing times and built long lasting memories with this bomb fruit. But sometimes, you just have to move on and getting this beautiful rumble fruit makes it way easier to do so. With my newfound ability, let's show the second C what I'm made of. I begin by doing all the necessary stuff to get race v2. You know, the typical 50 swan pirates, Bellamy, this puzzle, the colored flowers, all of that. Then I pay this guy and I can now dash a little bit further. But I'm not done with the upgrades just yet. If you can recall what happened a couple of seconds ago, I got the rumble fruit and it also happens to have an awakening so of course that means I gotta go and awaken it. Normally you would get a friend who has a Buddha fruit to join and carry you in the raid but I don't have any so I grab my mobile phone 
hopped on my alt account and did the carrying that way. Not two, not three, not four, not five. Stop there, Bron. Let's get a round of applause for LeBron, everybody. Alright, with all the power-ups in place, it is time to get back to grinding. Bomb fruit may have been good going forward, but having one of the best Logias in the game is just incredible. The Logia part doesn't really help with boss fights, obviously, but farming regular NPCs should be way better. On top of that, I've never even used this fruit before, so it's going to be a new experience for me. After the first few hours of using this fruit to level up, my initial thought is that it was just a great decision to eat this fruit. The distance that can be kept between me and the bosses makes so many of these bosses a cakewalk. Not to mention I'm capable of stunning them with like half of my abilities. Finishing up the NPCs on the ship and those that reside at the ice castle, I approach the awakened ice admiral in hopes of getting the key to unlock the Rengoku chest. But this took way longer than I expected. Eventually, 120 levels later, I got the key. With my new fire sword in hand, I make my way to my final destination of the second sea. And after reaching level 1550, I am now ready to head on to the third and final sea. But before doing so, let's take a quick peep at my stats. I put 400 into melee, 1803 into sword, maxed out blocks fruit, and of course, still nothing into defense. Now, the final step to reach the third C is to use a legendary fruit or better to unlock the swan fight. But, like an idiot, I was just going around, clicking about, and I accidentally ate the fruit I was meaning to give to this Trevor guy. You stupid. But after some time, I return with another quake fruit, hand him the fruit properly this time, and now it is time to take on the third C. Right after getting here, I realized I forgot to grab a kabucha, so after scooping one up, I start the grind that is the third C. First boss to fight in this C is Stone. He's not that bad. If I keep my distance and I dash to the side, none of his abilities can kill me. Next up, Island Empress is the complete opposite as almost all of her abilities are impossible to dodge while fighting in such a confined area. Her dashing kick attack, if I get within range, I die. The multiple arrow attack, I sometimes get lucky enough for none of them to hit, but it's unlikely. The only positive side of this fight is that I spawn really close. Next up, I head over to the Great Tree, and while grinding the Kilo Admiral, the Cake Prince boss spawned, and he drops one of the few accessories in the game that I am allowed to use. I ran over there as fast as I could, defeated him, and he dropped me the Pale Scarf. This is a much needed upgrade over the Tomoe Ring as it gives plus 15% to Blocks Fruit and plus 15% to Sword. With the final piece added to my build, it is time to lock in and grind all the way to max level. Let's do it. With no more levels remaining, it is time to conclude this video. But to answer the question, is it possible to reach max level with only 100 HP? 
The answer to that question is yes. It can be done. 